Everybody knows somebody who's got a story about when they saw a ghost. I believe that you can mess with the other world, and if you do, they won't hesitate to scare the crap out of you. stories, ghost stories, about, you know, the Bernathan Beast. It was probably 10 o'clock at night, um, and we were walking down the hill past Karen Crest underneath the cathedral. It was 9.30 or so, and we were just sitting on the hill and talking and whatnot. We had gone down there looking for it, ghost hunting. We were sitting underneath the trees on Cathedral Hill, just talking like I'd, I completely forgot that we were there to look for ghosts. We're looking across that field at the tree line. And all of a sudden I just like happened to glance over down the hill by the road. We saw this dark figure. We saw this shape. See this big black figure. I used to sit in front of the television and watch TV, and out of the corner of my eye, there was a gap, like a doorway. And I used to see someone go past in that gap. I'd turn around and look, and there'd be no one there. I was 15. Like most uh, teenagers, I had a job, compliments of my grandparents. My father's mother, uh, we called her Grandma Nana. I was supposed to mow her yard on a Saturday, but I had been lazy, and so I waited till Sunday to do it. And I went over right around the time I should have been at church. While I was mowing that yard, uh, I got a very weird feeling in my stomach. Um, not like a nervous feeling, but something definitely was moving inside, swirling some stuff around, and I heard a voice. I was coming in after studying late at night. Uh, it was probably two in the morning. I was sitting at the computer. There was like this thing for security. It beeps trouble like over and over again. That was blaring and it was really annoying. And after a little bit, I got that feeling that I don't know if people get when you feel like there's someone behind you, or like there's something, some space being filled around you. So I like looked around and nothing was there. And then, uh, I'm getting the chill, sorry. I, I looked up and there was a guy that was sitting out on the patio. He was in all white and he had no face. When I was about six years old, I lived in a house across from the CNS club for about a year, maybe maybe two years. I used to wake up from nightmares and then see things in my room. And I always thought, well, maybe I was mentally ill when I was a child. And, and then I thought, we lived in, you know, like six or seven different houses around town growing up, and none of this stuff ever happened in any of the other houses. It was only in that house when I was about six and seven. It's been 46 years since I've been um, back in these, this room where I saw these strange things when I was about six years old. I figured that was probably about 1961 or 62 now, so we're gonna go inside and take a look around again. Everything already looks so much smaller. It's, a, it's like a miniature version of what I remember. we saw this shape moving along the edge of the tree line. We saw this dark figure off in the distance. You see this big black figure? Black, shadowy. It looked like it was standing upright. Upright, human looking. Probably about eight feet tall, so like too big to be a person. But what was so weird about how it was walking was it was moving really quickly in space, but how it looked like it was walking was very slow. What was strange about it is that it didn't seem to be 
moving up and down as it was running. It seemed more to be gliding along like this. The weird thing about it is that it would like skip. Like it would be here and then all of a sudden it'd be over here and then it'd be back here. So it was like gradually moving down the road, but it would be like like flickering in and out. Sort of like a movie that has really bad tracking. It's just like flicking back and forth like 20 feet. And it was moving way faster than it seemed like a human should be able to run, especially so smoothly. And then in the blink of an eye, we all kind of gasp. And we're looking at it, and at the same time, we all gasp. I should have been able to see something, like some face, but there was nothing. No eyes, no mouth, no no nose, like, and I got up and I walked around still looking to see if he was there and uh, he was still there at that point and as soon as I turned the corner there was this concrete pillar and I ran around and there was nothing. And then I heard a hiss and there was a black cat just like freaking out at me and I've never seen that cat, never saw it again. There was no logical like explanation for somebody being able to run that fast and then having a black cat that I've never seen before. Once I really put it together like, hey, that guy didn't have a face and this cat came out of nowhere, that scared me to death. I didn't sleep that night, like I, I just couldn't. One day I was watching TV and I swung my head over and my wife said, oh, are you seeing that too? And it turned out that she also used to see someone going through that gap. So we started watching and uh, one of the things we noticed was the person going through there was always going from the bedroom to the bathroom, uh, always at night, and was wearing what looked like a blue dressing gown. So we decided to make some inquiries and we bought the house from an elderly man um, whose mother had died in that bedroom about 10 years before the church bought the house. We had some friend, or a woman in the congregation, who's a friend of ours, who knew people in the area who had been friends with that, that woman. So we asked her, if she would ask her friends if they knew what color her dressing gown was, or her bathrobe was. And she came back a few days later and she said she used to wear a pale blue bathrobe. I heard a voice, the voice said, you need to check on grandma. I knew at once it was my paternal grandfather who I never met. He died when my father was 12. I stopped mowing right there, right in the middle of a stripe of grass and went into uh, the breezeway and I knocked and there was no answer. She used to keep a spare key under a table in there and I looked under it and I, I didn't see it. And so I checked the garage and her car was there, but I knew that often her friend would drive her to church. So I thought that's probably where she is. So I went back to mowing her yard and on the next pass, I heard the voice again say, you really need to go check on Grandma Nana. Uh, and I kind of just dismissed it as I'm nervous about nothing. So I finished her yard. I figured I'll just go mow my other grandparents' yard. And by that time, church should be over and I didn't feel right the whole time. I just felt like I was missing something. So I finished the yard and they asked me to come in and visit and I politely said, you know, I would like to, but I can't. I have to go check on something. So I went back and then I remembered she had moved her key from under the table to behind a light socket in the garage. And I have no idea how I remembered that. It was told to me kind of in passing and I, I don't know why I remembered this thing, but I did and I found it and I opened it up and it smelled of death in my grandmother's uh, house. It just smelled horrible. Uh, you could smell um, urine and feces and it, it just smelled of death and I knew clearly something was wrong. So I turned the corner and my grandmother was lying face down halfway through the hallway on the linoleum floor uh, and she w was uh, not moving but I could hear her struggling for breath so I went down there and she was totally out of it. So I called 911 and 
They came and took her. She had suffered a stroke and had been lying there for about 18 hours. She lived long enough uh, for uh, my dad and his two sisters and their families to get out and say goodbye. So that's the plus side of it. And it was creepy in retrospect, knowing that something had definitely tapped me on the shoulder, smacked me in the back of the head and said, something's happening here and you need to do something. I had a lot of weird experiences in that house. It was all concentrated in that room down there, on the left-hand side, yeah. And right now I'm a little nervous about going in there, but, but I want to see it so badly. Wow, everything's kind of rearranged. It's, I know it's not, because I can see that you guys haven't done any structural changing, right? Whoa, I'm shaking. My body's actually trembling. I used to get regular visits from an old blind lady who used to come into my room and walk around, sort of feeling her way around in the dark. And she looked like she was trying to find something, but I, and she seemed really, really sad and lost, and I had no idea you know, what she was doing there. <clears throat> and it scared the hell out of me. She would just sort of fumble around in the room looking for something that seemed to be like out here. Like, uh, and I remember thinking she's lost her, she's lost her husband or one of her children or something, and she's come back to try to find them. But she just kept coming over and over and over again, and couldn't find what she was looking for. Her clothes were wet, and there was grass and mud all over her clothes, and you know, which made me—I never really—I thought it was bizarre when I was a kid. But when I grew up, I thought. You know, a lot of people that do research into this kind of stuff would say that, you know, it's a classic case of someone probably who had drowned, you know, coming back to their home and trying to find somebody. One night I had to, I had to go to the bathroom really bad and I, and I just thought, oh man, I'm never going to get, I can't run through her. She was standing right here, just, and she wouldn't move, and I had to walk right through her to get to the bathroom. And I, I finally just got the courage up to get jump out of my bed in my little pajamas and just just run right through her body. And I remember, man, that was so scary and so hard to do that. One night I had a nightmare and I woke up and there were two hands resting on my, my chest. Two adult male hands and they were white, like they'd been like like had powder on them or something like that, right? And the fingernails were all real nicely cut, and, that, and there were cufflinks on the sleeves. You know, and I, I didn't realize, but like I thought some guy is putting his hands on me, and I looked and I realized that his arms were, there were only arms in, in tuxedo sleeves up until like here, right? Just resting on my chest, right? And I tried to scream because I could feel the weight just pushing on me. It was heavy, they were heavy. And I couldn't scream, I was, uh, you know, just paralyzed. Okay, here was my bed, coming right out here. And I'd be just lying in my bed, and then all this weird stuff would happen. Finally I screamed, and my mom came into my room, you know, and I'm just a little guy, like six years old, and I'm just, don't you see them, don't you see them, get rid of them, get rid of them. And she took the sheet and she put the sheet over the hands and then she pulled the sheet back and the hands were gone, right? So I went, I went to sleep that night and then the next day I woke up and right where the hands were, had been there was a circle about an inch and a half wide of red liquid like, and I thought it was blood. This wasn't here then. This was just open. It's so unreal. I can't I can't even express what I'm feeling right now. I'm just it's just so hard for me right now, being in this room, imagining that this was the actual physical place that all this the paranormal kind of stuff happened. It just doesn't even seem possible. 
I'm going to take some pictures and then I'm going to just sort of study them and then I'll remember more things too, I think. One night I had a no nightmare and I woke up and there were body parts all over my bed. Half cut off legs, arms, things like that just strewn all over my bed and it would be sort of shining, like the phosphorescent type of light. I used to wake up in the middle of the night feeling someone sitting on my bed and I would feel the rebound of the bed and it would shock me into waking up and I'd be there and then, you know, these people would be here in, my, in the room with me and I didn't, you know, I didn't know who they were, or I didn't know why they were here. I would ask my mom as a Tuesday night because I knew that Tuesday night was the night that, that the old lady was going to come. I had all these different people that were like visiting me on regular nights and the scariest one of all was when I was six for, you know, months and months. I don't even know how long, but... And I, I still don't know what this was. I still have no idea. It's the main, most mysterious thing in my life. Okay, this is one of the strangest parts of the whole experience, and I almost don't want to say it. I um, was doing laundry at about three in the morning. I hated this basement because people told me about how scary it was, but I never experienced anything by myself. The lights were out, except for the laundry room. I was in there doing some laundry, and then the lights flickered. I'm like, oh, that, that's weird. I've never had anything like that happen. And then they kind of like really dimmed, and then I heard back in the furnace room or whatever it is, the electrical closets, I heard a little girl scream, like the, the loudest blood-curdling scream, and it was so terrifying. And so it kept getting closer and closer, and it, it, kept, it was like growing, like it was getting wider. When it was closest to us, it stopped moving, um, and it looked like it was on like four legs, like this big sort of like arched back with these four legs. We decided to... Uh, run at it. One friend started yelling like, who are you? And then in the blink of an eye, we all kind of gasped because it stood up. It suddenly moved down and became elongated and as if it were running on all fours. So we take off sprinting down the hill and it didn't move and we're getting closer and closer and closer. Still walking on two legs, but in that really slow motion, but walking really quickly. It seemed like a very long, dark, dog-like shape. When we were about 20 feet away, it just disappeared. And then when it got along to the end of the tree line, we couldn't see it anymore. And then it disappeared in the trees or whatnot. And then we looked down the hill, like way down in the back of the meadow, and we could see the figure. It, it moved across, you know, that whole meadow at the bottom of the Cathedral Hill. It moved from beside the road all the way to the back end in like a second. We were all pretty terrified, um, didn't really make any sense, didn't know anything that could explain what we were seeing. We were all just kind of like, that was really weird, what the heck was that? I know there's no way it was a deer just because it was too big and the way it was moving, like even when it was standing still, it was still like flickering in and out and it was just like solid black, like it was light enough outside that I would have been able to like clearly see a deer if it was one. I don't think any of us immediately thought like that had to have been a ghost. I think we all tried to think, well, what could that have been? And none of us had an answer. We went back to my dorm, the Glen Hall, and we were telling some people at the front desk and one girl was there and she's like, oh my goodness, come back and tell the story in the kitchen. There was a group of people in the kitchen and we told the story and they were like, you saw it too? They had been there and they saw the same thing. Several weeks later, I'm not sure exactly when, I was in Glen Hall and some people came rushing in, flushed and cold and terrified looking and said, we saw the demon, we saw the demon. And we were like, what? And they're like, were you the people who saw the Bernathan demon before and that everyone was talking about? And I was like, yeah. And they described what they'd seen and it was exactly the same thing, the same upright figure that changed into a dog-like figure and in the same spot. So 
that was very weird and I think certainly helped to perpetuate the future rumors and theories and myths about it all. I've heard a number of explanations, um, specifically that it was Blaine Bostock running around trying to give people a scare. Well, there was a rumor going around town for a while that I was the beast of Brunath, Br Brunath and because um, one night there were a bunch of kids walking down below Church Hill and I was taking a walk that night and I came walking, I was actually walking ahead of them and I heard them coming behind me. And I didn't want to run into anybody or talk to anyone that night. I was in a bad mood or something. I just wanted to be left alone. So this is crazy, but I just decided to disappear. So I just made a sharp right up Church Hill. I ran up Church Hill and then hid behind these trees while these kids came down walking you know, down the park, down the, the road. And this one girl started freaking out because she said there was a man walking down there and now he's gone he just disappeared and she started to scream right and then these kids were all getting all bugged out as they were coming down closer to where I had been and then I bolted and took off like up towards Church Park and apparently some of the kids turned around and saw me running and somehow they connected my running and you know sort of darting and disappearing with the stories they had heard earlier about um, this this like man running along on all fours that you know either transformed into a wolf or whatever. But I had nothing to do with the earlier three or four events that happened leading up to that, which was just me having fun, you know, running away from a bunch of kids and getting them all worked up. So that's all that was. You know, I was just in an altered state of awareness at that point in my life, and I have no idea what, what it all means. Someone used to come into my room dressed up as a, as a werewolf. I, I would wake up and I would hear this guy coming down the hall. I could hear his toenails clicking on the wooden floors. Click, click like, like a dog, a big dog walking down the hall and coming in to see me. I heard the werewolf come into this room. I heard his footsteps on the on the on the on the uh, hallway. The, I remember the wooden floors click 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 his toenails as he was coming down the hall. Then I heard him go into my mom's room, and he would come in and he would just like like push my bed, jump around on my bed, run around in my room, snarl at me all over the room. He was running around in the room. He would jump up on things and jump down onto my bed. He just. You know, and I, I, I still think that werewolf was a real person dressed in a costume. We were living in a college men's dorm at the time, so... And I remember associating this a lot with the fall, so it could have been around Halloween. You know, but the fact is, he kept coming in here a, a bunch of times dressed in different clothes. You know, it didn't just happen one or two times. Of all the things I ever saw, that was the most physical. So I, I, I think it was a real, you know, physical person because I could hear him, I could feel the weight on the bed, I could hear the sounds in the room, like the other things that I saw never made any sounds that I could remember really, you know. I tried to work some of this stuff out, you know, in therapy for a few years because that werewolf thing really, really did a number on me. And, uh... We never got to the bottom of it. You know, it remains as mysterious as it ever was when I was a child. Wow. This is really beautiful out in the winter time, you know? You could see the hill covered in snow. It was beautiful. I mean, this I love this place too. At the same time, it was so scary. When I think of my, my deepest memories of beauty and love and everything, it's all still here too. Everything that's in my imagination now and anything I I feel like when I play music or write or do anything artistic, it all relates back to my experiences here as a kid. You know, all that stuff is still so vivid and uh, strong to me, even though it's been almost 50 years. Okay, well, we just came out of the house. It just feels like I'm finishing up something that's been kind of broiling around in me for about 50 years, so to come back and really 
you know, have my body in here physically again instead of just my imagination and my memory is, is really great. So thank you very much, you guys, for letting me be part of this. I definitely believe that there's like spirits that are close to this world that can show up and do weird things for whatever reason. I know something's true when I my body feels a certain way. Like love, you, you love someone, you get this feeling. You see a ghost, you get a, a creepy feeling that you're like, okay, well, when I get scared other ways, I, I don't get this feeling. We are so close to the other world when just like, you know, this close all the time and we just don't don't realize it unless something breaks through and we're seeing it. Again, today, I'm in stop time. Turn is wrong.